Coming up in this video, I'll be showing you how you could avoid drama like this with your shop bits. Who translated it, SP? Ah, oh, maybe by mistake. Because these odds were taken then. And yeah, I'm, I'm fixing it. Don't okay. He's 1095, yeah? Yep. Not 2720. Alright, because I've had some the disputes over that. Okay, alright. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, right. I remember this one. Nice. What is it, 2600 or something? 2629.50. Yeah. I need to get a reference to pay out. Though. Okay. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, I've got that one as well, please. So it's bad enough, isn't it, guys? When you place a bet, actually getting a winner and then when you do get the winner go up to the counter and finally realize you're either sp'd or you're not given the odds on the selections that you chose now here on the screen is a common example of what happens when you're placing a bet on fast moving markets like greyhounds or this also happens on horses just before the off now they said to me that this dog that i bet on was sp at seven to one i said no it weren't i took ten to one on that so I said to them, pull up the price history of this dog. And this one in Betfred, they pulled up the price history and they can print it out on a receipt and show you. What you then do is compare the time of the price and then compare it with when that slip was put through the till. So if the slip was put through the till on this bet at 10.28, that would then be 10 to 1. So I did have this dog written down at 10 to 1. Because 10 to 1 was the odds when I looked on the app and I went straight to the counter with this dog and then they confirmed that it was 10 to 1. But this must have been one of the first selections within the lucky 15 bet that I placed on this one and it must have been at the top because by the time they checked the other three dogs underneath this must have chopped in from 10 to 1 down to 17 to 2. Because they tried saying to me that it was 7 to 1. And I challenged them and said, no, I've got out a 10 to 1. Please can you print out the price history record. And then they can print this out on the receipt, on the till, and then they can compare it. And then they'll change it. And that's a really good way of transparency. But I've had this so many times, guys. So many times. And over half the time, it's not their fault. Because when you've got uh, odds that are... On greyhound markets or horse racing that is uh, close to off time, the prices are going to move quickly and it's, it's not their fault, it's just something that happens. But never take their word for it, guys. Never take their word for it that, oh, it was two to one. Always ask for this, especially if it makes a lot of difference. But it can go against you sometimes. You don't want to look too clued up on things when you're in the shop. Now, this was a, quite a big payout. I think it was on, written on here 16.80. If it was something about 20, 30 quid, I wouldn't even have bothered because you don't want to look too like on the ball. You want to look a bit of a mug, which is why I placed bets like this here. A mug bet when I was sitting in their board, I placed the bet on Donald Trump to win President of the United States 2024. And I think these odds are quite big now in hindsight. But I placed a silly bet like that as a tester bet to see if I was SP'd or not. So I said, excuse me, can I take the price on that? And I'd rather do that than than try and get a dog bet on. And then they say, oh, no, you're SP'd. So if you're an experienced shop better, you'll know exactly what I mean here. You might go up to the counter and they'll say to you, oh, no, we can't take any of your bets because you're SP'd. Yet you've been sitting in there for 30 minutes. So you've kind of wasted your time. And you don't want to be putting bets on five minutes before the off and they tell you that because you've not got no time to relocate to another shop especially if you've been sp'd in a lot of other local shops as well you need time to prepare and so i found there's nothing better than a stupid donald trump bet to get a bit of a reaction from them make them think you're a little bit stupid as well because who else would put a bet on like that and have a bit of giggle a bit of a giggle at the same time now, another thing I recommend is giving the shop staff some tips. Yeah, you heard right. Give them some tips. Now, some fellow sharbers think that this is a bit muggy, but I think it's an investment. If you remember back to the first clip in the video, this clip here. Who translated it, SP? Ah, uh, maybe by mistake. Because these odds were taken then, 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm fixing it. Don't okay. Fix it. Oh, lovely. Now, did you notice there, he, he sounded like he was going to make a bit of an effort, which he did. He said, I'm getting it, don't worry. Now, he knew whenever he saw my face that he might be getting a tenner, because every time I had a big payout, he was getting a tenner. Now, I don't know, I think that about was 600 or something like that, and I gave him a tenner again. But that would have, that bet would have been 200 and something, had it have been SP'd. Now, if he hadn't have seen my face and realise, oh, this is Mr. Tipman here, he gives me a tenner for lunch each time, he might not have been so keen about sorting this bet out. Now, he did sort the bet out, he got on the phone and he made an effort. Now, you could be wasting your time giving them tips, when, but I only gave them tips when it was a big win. But I did find that some of them were up for making an effort. I remember once in Watford, when I went to, I had a big win, four, five grand, and they, um, the the I wanted cash, right? And the guy, I said to him, can you help me out? And I, ju I was just holding £20 in my hand. I said, I need to get the cash. He got on the phone. He was going to drive personally, drive his car 10 miles away to another shop to go and get the cash and come back with me. Now, <laughs> that that is, what, that, that is what the staff will do, you know, because they're, they're on minimum wage. Plus, I swear the other guy just wanted to get out of the shop anyway. But he managed to get that money for me anyway. He managed to get most of that money as cash for me from the shop down the road. If you're listening to it, mate, cheers for that, because you helped me right out that day. Weird thing about that day was uh, in that shop, they was having an audit. And when, because I, I was a bit sheepish about going up to the till, uh, but when these audit guys went, because I didn't know who they was at first, he said, oh, we've had a big win in here. Um, and they come out, these auditors come out, after a big win, I said, what was the win? He said, someone won 20 grand on horses and they wanted to see what, what hows and whys and what's going on. So um, they probably weren't, didn't appreciate me winning four or five grand the next day. And also, another thing, if you'd notice in a picture, you've got in Watford, William Hill and Betfred right next to each other. Now, Watford isn't the, the top location for Sharbin, but what I liked about this location is you had William Hill, Betfred, another Betfred round the corner, a Weatherspoons in the middle of that, a shopping centre right by, loads of ATMs, a coffee shop. Now they're the type of places where you want to spend a day out shopping. The worst places are where you've got to pay for parking, there's nothing else around by the shop, sometimes the toilets are not even working, and they're an absolute nightmare. Now there are some really golden spots, and I might f feature that in a, in a future video. If you knew, know any golden spots, guys, for shopping, like if you got like a Paddy, Betfred, Ladbrokes, Coral, all that, all down one one strip. Um, I do know one strip that's that's got all that down it. Um, until they took the William Mill away three years ago. Uh, comment down below what the best shopping locations are. Now the final thing I'm going to explain about guys is this clip featuring this guy here. Nice. What is it, 2,600 or something? 2,629.50. Yeah. I need to get a reference to pay out. Though. Okay. So it's going to, going to take a bit of time. I've got that one as well, please. Now, <laughs> this guy. This guy calls me so much egg. He got me banned from eight or nine shops all in one hit. But it was kind of a gradual thing that was ongoing. Because he'd seen me years before that previously. Previous to running about in these shops um, doing this stuff. And he knew I was a shrewd punter, but he hadn't seen me for a couple of years. But when I went into a shop um, miles away from the shop where he usually works, say 20 miles away, he thought, hang about, what's going on here? But I didn't realise he was at the back. He was at the back of the counter. You know where they have the back room? So I'm arguing what I explained about earlier, where you get the price history. I'm arguing with a member of staff in there, and he pops out the back. I thought, oh, no. So what he must have been is an area manager by now, because he was a manager like three years ago. Anyway, um, later on I go into the shop, he weren't there, right, and I was SP'd. And he must have told them, look, that guy is up to no good, he, know, he knows too much there. And that's why I said, use that price history sparingly, don't waste it on £20 stuff and all that. And another reason I was sulking this day with this guy, right, was because he weren't even supposed to be working in this shop this morning when I was uh, supposed to be 
collect in the bet for 2,600. He was doing cover. Now, I know this because I went to the shop bang on 8 o'clock in the morning or whatever it was when they opened and it wasn't even open. It didn't open until 8.20. Now, that tells me he's some kind of area manager, right, that was called to go to that shop to open the shop up until a member of staff turned up uh, because I reckon a member of staff blew out and called in sick. Now, it's just unlucky for me that this same guy see me and then suddenly realised, oh, there's something up here with this guy. I keep seeing this bloke here. He's doing my head in. And it's about time we've put an end to this pest coming in here, raking money out of our shop on the daily. Hello, mate. Can you take a bet, please? Okay, I need to get a reference after. Yeah, I'll just get it. Uh, 003. So is this the same, same customer? Right, okay, so he knows he's supposed to be SP. No, I took the odds on them. These ones here, if you look, Kevin took the odds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Right, uh, give me 10 minutes, let me just sort this bit out, and then, because uh, obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to bring... Yeah, because... That's fine. So I'll, I'll ring better settlement and see what they want me to do. Yeah. All right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's, it's SP anyway then. Yeah. Okay. All right. No worries. All right. <coughs> Cheers, mate. Apparently you were informed yesterday that you were SP only. No, no, I weren't. Who told me this? The, the exact same bet was, yeah. was, has been SP'd. So I'll just interrupt here. It wasn't that exact same bet. What happened was a shop 15 miles away. I went to put on a couple of multiples and they were repeating the dog's names over the phone. Then I went to relocate to this shop here um, where I put this bet on and... <clears throat> um, there was a few of the same dogs in there. So that's how they've put two and two together and come up with this. Like I said, if I'd have got in this shop that evening after these dogs run and cashed my slip, um, even if they hadn't have had the cash there, I'd have said pay it back to card and I'd have been all right. But because it's been left overnight, security have got to the ticket and they've done this. Well, this guy has made things hot as well. Here's the rest of it. The exact same bet. So dog traders as SP did this bet. But where was the other bet put on? So apparently you've had bets in yeah. all similar bets, exactly the same as this, same stake, same bets, and you were informed that you've been SP'd. But that don't apply to all shops, does it? It applies to all shops at Betfred, yeah. Uh. So I'm not getting the odds? No. But every day I come in here, I see Fred saying, oh, I like giving the value to my customers, and I can't even get normal odds. He he doesn't like giving the value to his customers. He's proved it there. I oh, know I'm not moaning at you, I'm just pointing out a fact and an observation that Fred is lying, because he won't even give me these odds. I don't think it's so much that, it's obviously all the, all the dogs you're, you're backing, so you're either, you're either in the know, yeah. or, Getting lucky? I would, well, no, you're not getting. You're definitely not getting lucky. I've, I've looked at your prices. Your prices have been six to one, backed in seven to four, mate. That, that doesn't happen. Yeah, on every, on every, 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 every dog you've done, that doesn't happen. So not you, every you, dog. you know, pretty much every dog you've done. How much does that pay out? Six at to SP? one into five to two. Yeah, yeah, but I took the five to two. Three though. to one into seven to four. Nine to two into five to two. Four to one into eleven to four. So they're all being backed in. Yeah, but that first one, five to two, Kevin changed that, and that's proof that I took the odds at the time. <coughs> but Kevin wouldn't have known your SP at the time, would he? So this is this is the point. So when I phone up references, they, they're going to tell me the same thing anyway because they're going to see your bet on the system. So they're still going to SP you. So I reckon Ibas will say differently about this. That you have to you tell me actually in the actual shop, Take it to Ibas if you want to. That's completely up to you. How much is the payout on SP? 1,079.11. 1079. Okay, I'll get back to you on that.
can I just have the other one then? Or is that SP as well? It'll be SP as well. <laughs> yeah, I'll get back to you on these. How much is that one? That one. That was supposed to be 160. And what is that SP? That one. 918. That was still quite big, that odds. <coughs> but these are not even ARBs. You know, like an ARB on Betfair, it's not an arbitrage bet, so I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm just taking the odds that Freddie's offering and he doesn't like it. If I was doing my bollocks, he, he would happily take my bets. 7 to 1 into time to 2. 9 to 2 still, yeah? Okay, I'll come back in, mate. So, yeah. I'm not mainly at you, it's company. No, I understand. Yeah. yeah, I know. But not ideal for you, but obviously in the same room. I'm on the we, understanding. We get, we get a lot of people do it all the time, where yeah. they come in and they... Red, hard. They get SP because you know market movers and stuff like that. Yeah, or if we're taking Fred's boost and stuff like that. But yeah. these are not even. I'm not even taking enhanced prices. <coughs> Need to get some decent traders. I think that's the that's well, the solution. Yeah, I know. All right. Yeah, in, in essence, I can understand why they have SP. There is there is a legit reason. For that. And I've only just looked at two of the bets, so both of them have been massively backed in. Yeah, and that would be why. But it does make my point that Fred doesn't give the value because if he was, he, would, he, would S, he wouldn't SP me. He would give me the value. It just so happens I'm winning. Then people get SP for a lot less. 95% of people are losing, and I'm winning. <coughs> Surely you can spare, spare me that, but no. But anyway, I'm not moaning at you, mate. I'll, get, I'll come back in. Yeah, no All right, cheers. So after numerous attempts phoning um, customer services and also revisiting the shop a couple of times, they uh, doubled down and just said no. Um, I knew that if I took it to IBAS, Fred were within their um, terms and conditions because if you get SP from one shop, you SP from the others. And also, if you go to IBAS, they share your details. So they would have had my name because they'd have had to pay it to me. They would have probably said pay by card or check or something difficult. They share your details. So I would have effectively got myself a barring notice, right? If I'd have got, gone to IBES and lost the case anyway. So that would have been a waste of time. Guys, I'm posting this Sunday Easter. So four days time, there'll be another Betting Shop Diaries video, guys. If you want to see all 10 episodes of the Betting Shop Diaries, you can see that in the playlist down the bottom left hand side and at the top there's a Betfair trading strategy video. Hope you have a good Easter guys and I hopefully see you in the next video.